everybody. Welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episodes 15 through 18, we learned about different types of aggregations and how we could use them to summarize our data as metrics, statistics, and other analytics. Today, we're going to switch gear and talk about Elasticsearch mapping. And the best way to learn is by sending requests from Kibana to Elasticsearch to view and customize the mapping. To follow along, you need to complete these four steps. First step is to set up and run Elasticsearch and Kibana. Then we add the e-commerce data set to Elasticsearch. Afterwards, we set up data within Elasticsearch. Lastly, we pull up the Kibana console in one window and the part five repo in another and we'll arrange these windows side by side. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, I've already covered how you can complete steps one through three in a separate video. To complete these steps, go to the link on the screen, then watch from timestamp 410 to 750. For those of you who've been following along, you just need to complete step four. To do so, go to the link on the screen, and the link is also included in the description of the video. Once you get to the page, click on part five and have this pulled up in a separate window. Then pull up the Kibana console, also known as DevTools, in a separate window. All right, so let's get started here. I have two windows open side by side. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part five repo. And this repo contains all the requests we'll be sending throughout this episode. And I've scrolled down to what is a mapping section. Okay, so let's focus on the big picture real quick. So imagine you're building an app that requires you to store and search data, and you're using Elasticsearch to make that possible. Naturally, you want to store data using the smallest disk space while maximizing your search performance. And that is where mapping comes in, which defines how a document and its fields are indexed and stored. And it does that by defining field types of your documents. And depending on its type, the fields are stored and indexed accordingly. As a result, mapping can significantly affect how Elasticsearch searches and stores data. So learning how to define your own mapping is really helpful because it helps you to optimize the performance of Elasticsearch and save disk space as well. Now, when you hear about mapping for the first time, it may sound really abstract. So we'll break it down to bite-sized pieces to really understand this concept. So before we delve into mapping, let's review a few concepts. All right, so let's scroll down to review from previous workshops. And throughout the series, we learned how to query and aggregate data to get insights. But before we could run queries or aggregations, we had to add data to Elasticsearch first. Now in Elasticsearch, data is stored as documents, and a document is a JSON object that contains whatever data you want to store in Elasticsearch. So a document looks something like this. In a JSON object, it contains a list of fields or key value pairs. So let's say we're creating an app for a produce warehouse and you want to store data about produce so you could search for it. Each document contains information about a produce item. For example, this one has fields called name, botanical name, produce type, and so on. And you'll see that the each field is of a different JSON data type. For example, the field name is of a string data type, the field quantity is of an integer data type, and we even see the type Boolean here as well. So let's say we want to index this document. So let's scroll down to that section. So for all requests we'll go over, I've included the general syntax for you, so you could customize this for your own use case. But for our tutorial, we'll use the request shown under example. So let's scroll down to that section. So to index a document, we start our request with post followed by name of the index that we want to index documents into, then a document endpoint, followed by 
a JSON object with whatever you want to store in Elasticsearch. And we're naming our index temp index. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that this document has been successfully indexed into the temp index. What we've covered so far is a review from previous workshops. What we haven't gone over is what actually goes on behind the scenes when you index a document. And this is where mapping comes into play. Remember, mapping defines how a document and its fields are indexed and stored. And it does that by defining the type of each field. So let's scroll down to mapping explain section. So mapping looks something like this. So think of it as an Elasticsearch data schema. It contains a list of names and types of fields in an index. And depending on its type, each field is indexed and stored differently in Elasticsearch. So mapping plays an important role in how Elasticsearch stores and searches for data. So let's go back to the request we sent earlier. So this request asks Elasticsearch to create a new index called temp index and index this document into it. But wait a minute, mapping determines how a document and its fields should be indexed and stored. But we didn't define the mapping ahead of time. So how did this document get indexed? So let's scroll down to dynamic mapping section. Well, when a user doesn't define mapping in advance, Elasticsearch creates or updates the mapping by default, and this is known as dynamic mapping. So let's check out this diagram here. So we asked the Elasticsearch, hey, create a new index called temp index and index this document into it. Then Elasticsearch goes, all right, you got it. But then it realizes that the mapping has not been defined for the temp index. So here we have a document that we just indexed. So what Elasticsearch does is it looks at each field of a document and tries to infer the data type from the field content. For example, here Elasticsearch is looking at the field quantity and sees that it's a JSON type integer. So it assigns the field type long to this field. Once Elasticsearch does this for every field in this document, it creates a list of all the field names and types called mappings. And depending on the assigned field type, each field of the document is indexed and primed for different types of requests. So let's take a look at the mapping that Elasticsearch created for us. To do so, let's scroll down to view the mapping section, then down to example. So the request that you're going to send is get followed by name of the index whose mapping you want to view, then the mapping endpoint. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. Then Elasticsearch will retrieve the mappings of the temp index. And if you look at the field properties, it lists all the fields of a document that we just indexed in an alphabetical order. So for example, you'll see the field named botanical name, country of origin, date purchased, and etc. And if you look at each field, it lists the type of each field. For example, the field botanical name has been typed as text and keyword. The field they purchased has been typed as date. The field quantity has been typed as long. The field unit price has been typed as float and so on. These are only a few of many field types that are recognized by Elasticsearch. So if you're interested in all field types of Elasticsearch, scroll down the page and click on this link here. In the next three episodes, we'll talk about what type of mapping is best for different types of requests. Then we'll learn how to define our own mapping. 
Okay, so we just learned about what mapping is and how Elasticsearch creates a dynamic mapping for you if you don't define the mapping ahead of time. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack Part 5. And Part 5 is a full-length workshop where I talk about what mapping is and how you can define your own mapping to make indexing and searching more efficient. We also talk about what steps you could take when you need to make changes to an existing mapping. We also talk about a feature called the runtime field. And this is an awesome feature that allows you to add fields to existing document without re-indexing your data. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.